On the news, Supreme Court sacks Chikarao as senator elect to firms Rufai as Kano Central senator elect. The National Broadcasting Commission issues last warning to broadcast stations threatens to revoke licenses. And National Population Commission says election postponement may affect commencement of 2023 census. It's good to have you join us on News Now. I am Mary Kanu. The Supreme Court has affirmed the Rufai Hanger as Senator elect for Kanu Central Senatorial District under the platform of the New Nigeria People's Party. The Apex Court also removed former Governor of Kanu State Ibrahim Shikarao as the candidate of the NNPP in the February 25 National Assembly election, delivering judgment in an appeal brought before it by the Independent National Electoral Commission. The court upheld the judgments of the Federal High Court and the Court of Appeal both in Abuja, which had earlier upheld the candidature of Hangar as the candidate of the party. The Federal High Court and the Court of Appeal had in their previous judgment upheld Hangar as the senatorial candidate of the NNPP for Kano Central following the withdrawal of Ibrahim Shikarao as a member of the party and a senatorial candidate due to reconcilable differences he allegedly had with the party. Rather than obeying the Federal High Court order, INEC appealed the judgment at the Appellate Court and lost. Not satisfied with the judgments of the trial and appellate courts, the electoral body proceeded to the Supreme Court to challenge the judgments which upheld Hanga as a lawful candidate of the NNPP Kado Central Senatorial District. In the judgment prepared by Justice Uwani Aba Aji, but delivered by Justice Emmanuel Agim, the Supreme Court held that the INEX appeal lacked merit and substance and dismissed it. And the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has threatened to short down broadcast stations whose activities are capable of undermining peaceful coexistence. NBC Director General Balarabe Ilala, Ilela, rather, who spoke at a meeting with broadcast stations on the coverage of the February 25 elections, said the Commission monitored the coverage of the elections by some broadcast stations and noted how they made the platforms available to unpatriotic individuals to make subversive, hateful, and inciting utterances, particularly post election. The NBC DG said the coverage of the elections and post election matters were marred by unguarded statements, divisive and dangerous comments. He also called on broadcast stations to avoid the promotion of negative conversations which are not only dangerous to democracy but pose threats to Nigeria's corporate existence. And the commencement of the 2023 National Housing and Population Census earlier slated for March 29 is likely to be affected by the postponement of the governorship and state assembly elections. This is according to the chairman of the National Population Commission, Nasir Kwara, who was speaking at a meeting with a resident representative of the United Nations Population Fund in Abuja. The state elections, which were earlier scheduled to hold on March 11, have now been scheduled for March 18 by the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC. Although no specific date is fixed for the commencement of the exercise, Kwara told reporters that he will consult with President Muhammad Buhari for a suitable date for the national census. And there have been various reactions over the postponement of the state governorship and Houses of Assembly elections from March 11 to 18, stemming from the case brought forward by the opposition parties to permit the inspection of all beavers, machines and ballast materials used for the February 25 presidential poll. Speaking on the order of the appeal court on TV360's program analysis, legal expert Evans Ophaley said the postponement was necessary on the basis of national interest in a bid to allow INEC time to reconfigure the Beavis machines in readiness for the elections as requested by the electoral umpire. He however expressed concern over the reconfiguration exercise process by INEC, which he says is capable of tampering with evidence to be presented in court in the case of alleged irregularities during the February 25 presidential elections, adding that INEC needs to provide answers on the storage capacity of the Beavis machines. What INEC 
uh, uh, was trying to do was to blackmail the public, the, the, the Nigerian populace, with that expression. And the court was so smart about it that the court made sure that they granted them their request to reconfigure. Because if you don't grant them the request to reconfigure, when the governorship election flops, they are going to say that it's a court that cost it, or that it's a Labour Party that cost it. When they asked for time, they knew where they were. Now, the court have taken them by their words, and granted their, their requests, and the, the public, there's no, there's no protest anywhere, no outcry anywhere. It means the public have accepted it, giving them that time. So if on Saturday, we now, INEC, INEC uh, officials start to come to their, stroll to their polling unit around 12 o'clock, around 1 a.m., uh, 1 p.m., sometimes 2, sometimes 4 p.m., when the uh, election, we'll know that INEC have an habitual propensity to frustrate the 2023 election, elections. Because what happened in the presidential election was that in so many polling units, they did not get there early. And so they, they, they had to, uh, the election spill over to the next day. Okay? So with all the logistic issues they are complaining about, they have been given ample opportunity. We had four years to prepare for this election for Christ's sake. The timetable came out three years ago for this same election. Okay? The, the, the act for was released to the over 305 billion naira was released to them. So what exactly is INEX problem right now? Why is it that they are unable to do the needful to ensure that Nigerians get a credible election? So uh, if they want to right the wrongs of the past, they must be able to uh, come next Saturday, do the right thing to ensure that they go back to their regulation, read their regulation again, because we have it. We are looking at their regulation and we are benchmarking their conduct vis-a-vis -vis their regulation and the uh, uh, Electoral Act. Okay? So they should look at it again, read it again, go back to it and ensure that whatever they do must tally with that. And River State Governor Yusum Wike has marked the campaign organization of the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar over their protest of the outcome of the February 25 poll. Atiku came second at the recently contested presidential election, polling 6.9 million votes, while for winner, Bola Tunubu of the All Progressives Congress caught 8.7 million votes. The former vice president, alongside the PDP national chairman Iyocha Ayu and Atiku's running mayor, Eight Ifanyo Kowa on Monday led a black uniform protest to the national headquarters of the Independent National Electric Commission in Abuja. However, Wike, who mocked the PDP leaders while speaking at the commissioning of Igoruta Internal Roads in the Ikori local government area of River State, assured the People's Democratic Party supporters the first phase of the war is over, adding that the second phase is about to begin. I don't used to watch Arise television. But these days I have started watching. I don't see anybody get there. They are not talking about me again. All of them. There's one who from Edo. They say his name is Delemo Mudu Aware. Professional press singers. Now, in his state, he couldn't produce one National Assembly member, one. In his state, he couldn't make his presidential candidate to win 25%. These are people who have the freedom, F1 tree, to appear on a free television media to talk about River State. Appear again free now. Look at that guy here. Me, three over three. You, zero over three. Is it the same thing? The difference is clear. On Saturday again this week, we'll score another one. We'll score another one. And we take all the 32 seats, 32 over 32. It is not our portion to win. And in a fresh twist, uh, a federal high court, Abuja, has ordered the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, to allow eligible voters with the temporary voters' cards participate in the March 18 governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Justice Obiora Iguatu, who gave the ruling on Thursday, predicated the order on the grounds that the plaintiffs were duly registered and captured in INEC's database. The court held that there was no portion of the law both in the 1999 constitution and the electoral 
Act, the states that it was only the permanent voters' cards, PVCs, that could be used both at the law under Section 47 provided for a voters' card. While describing the order of the trial court as a reflection of the people's will, legal practitioner Gabriel Ehigato, while speaking on TV360's flagship program, Deji 360, said INAC is compelled to obey the court's order to ensure equal rights for citizens. He added that allowing only the permanent voters' cards limited the democratic rights of citizens. Uh, the court is so supreme that it must give its own judgment and it must be obeyed. Uh, to me, I think INEC have not done the needful. Over time, INEC have you know, restrain power to themselves to to also run their own uh, uh, functionality without actually giving so unduly concentration uh, 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 to the law. What we know as lawyers is that a law must reflect the interest of the people. A law is not made for just for certain kind of reason. It's made for the generality of, of, of the people. And I think for me, the, the, the court have done so well they virtually do the needful. Because when you look at the law, even the electoral says that a voter will only vote when he presents himself with a voter's card. It does not stipulate that it must be either a permanent voter's card or a temporary voter's card. When you look at section uh, 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 47, subsection 1 of the electoral 2022 uh, as amended, you will see it for yourself. It's, it's very clear. It's one of the most Fairness and simple interpretation of law in the electoral that a voter will be present at the polling unit, presenting himself with the voter's card to the presiding officer. So it, it, it is simple there must be a permanent voter card or a temporary voter card. But over the years, sir, since 2011 or so, I think have, you know, encompassed to themselves some powers, creating issues here and there, saying that you can only vote with the, with, with the permanent voter's card. And it's not in our law. I think uh, if the beavers could not capture a, a, a voter with a, with a, a temporary voter's card, then I think there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, but uh, it, I had some incident last, last, in the last uh, uh, general election, the one that we just concluded the presidential election, where people came to poly unit with the temporary voter's card, and they were not allowed to vote. They were not allowed to vote. So it shows that I make them themselves. I mind over time that you must vote with your permanent voter's card. I think that was because the beaver's machine that came into innovation. That was why they, they were hammering on that. And uh, do not so forget that some persons will actually refuse to go and their permanent voter's card. And also, they will also complain on the side of INEC. INEC were not proactive enough to provide the permanent voter's card for people. So for me, the court are giving an order that you cannot disenfranchise those with the permanent, with the uh, 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 the temporary voters card, but for the they come to the voting unit, the voting unit and the voting center, and the beavers machine is not able to capture them because they are temporary uh, uh, voters card order that there's nothing and they can do. And also security matters, the defense headquarters says over 1,000 terrorists, including their family members, have surrendered to troops of Operation Hadin Kai across the northeastern states in the last two weeks. Speaking during a bi-weekly news briefing in Abuja, Director of Defense Media Operations Musa Damadami said eight terrorists were killed while 35 terrorism logistics suppliers were arrested and 19 victims were rescued. Troops equally neutralized, eight terrorists arrested, 35 terrorist logistics supplier and rescued 19 civilians, while a total of 1,332 terrorists and members of their families, comprising of 222 adult male, 411 adult female, and 699 children surrendered to troops at different locations within the theater of operations. Following credible information, Troops of Operation Safe Haven arrested five suspected cattle rustlers and recovered 35 rustle cattle at Lombiri village in Barrington Lady local government area of Plateau State. On the same day, Troops of Operation Wild Stroke conducted raid operations at Utega village in Kasinala local government area of Benue State. During the operation, Troops neutralized two bandits and recovered 
one AK-47 rifle, eight rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition, war mobile phones, among other sundry items. And the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Akin Abayomi, says 32 patients have been discharged following Thursday's collision of a train and a staff bus in the Ikeja area of the state. Abayomi, alongside wife of Nigeria's president-elect, Senator Oluremi Tunubu, and the First Lady of Lagos State, Ibijoke Somwoli, on Friday, visited victims of Thursday's train accident involving a staff bus of a state government at the various health facilities where they have been treated, addressing journalists at a press conference at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital last week and Friday. The Commissioner for Health said a total of 102 casualties were recorded. Whilst commiserating with the patients at the Lagos State Accident and Emergency Center, Senator Tinubu paid the medical bill of a young man who lacked the financial means for surgery as a result of pains arising from clinical right femoral fracture. Yesterday, as of early this morning, we were able to transfuse 40 units of blood to the victims to stabilize them, those that required blood because they're either going in for surgery or they were bleeding into their brain or their chest or their abdomen, were able to save their lives with rapid access and availability of safe blood. Thank you very much to all citizens of Lagos State who responded in a very uh, unusual way. Uh, yesterday, we were able to collect 256 voluntary units of blood from sympathizers and well-wishers. And we're really very grateful to the public for responding in this way. Um, in case uh, we have more access or more need for blood, you can see that on top of the blood we have in our blood bank, we're able to replenish our stores with a very uh, generous response from the community. I just hope that the drivers are more careful in the future and because they can see what has happened now. Lives have been lost so we uh, you know, commensurate with the family that uh, lost some loved ones and those who are here we wish them speedy recovery. To seize the opportunity to say that we triaged in compliance with international best practice. When you have huge numbers of casualties. There is no way that you can have vacant or empty emergency bed spaces to put them. So the whole idea is to put them in an open space so that you can clearly see the injuries that they have. Health workers who are numbering over a hundred will be able to move around freely to be able to ascertain the kind of injuries they were dealing with. Well, we'll take a break here, but still to come, Nigeria's Flying Eagles defeats Tunisia, claims bronze medal at 2023 AFCON. We'll bring you details of the story and more right after this break. Welcome back. As a recap of our top stories tonight, the Supreme Court has affirmed Rufai Hanga as Senator-elect for Kano Central Senatorial District under the platform of the New Nigeria People's Party. The Apex Court also removed former Governor of Kano State Ibrahim Shikarau as the candidate of the NNPP in the February 25 National Assembly election. We also told you that the chairman of the National Population Commission, Nasir Kwara, says the commencement of the 2023 National Housing and Population Census, earlier slated for March 29, is likely to be affected by the postponement of the governorship and state assembly elections. The state elections, which were earlier scheduled to hold on March 11, have now been scheduled for March 18 by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Well, in case you missed any of the news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex or TV or log into our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online.
And now to COVID-19 update. Three years after the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, health experts have decried a decline in surveillance and vaccination in Nigeria. Speaking to TV360 Nigeria in an interview, public health expert Tuyi Mebawondu dismissed the belief that the pandemic is over, saying lack of information dissemination on the part of the federal government has led to the bridging gaps in vaccination coverage. Mebawondu also sounded a note of warning on further possible movements mutations and strains which could lead to a worse situation than seen in the last three years. Where is the magical thinking, the level of magical thinking, well, COVID is gone, it's not for Africa. And then even the mutant strain that is spreading rapidly, um, America is leading, followed by China, then India. These are three big countries. And we know that we're connected, well connected to this country. Even what we used to do before, where we have um, lots of people um, a check at the airport trying to look at what is going on at the airport, um, trying to look at people that are coming to the country. We, 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 have, we seem to have forgotten about all those, all those ones now. We don't do all those things. Uh, people don't uh, make the testing compulsory again. Let's, the epicenters of COVID in Nigeria, there's Lagos, Port and um, Abuja. Those are the epicenters. Let's take Lagos as an example. All the isolation centers have been decommissioned. That's your wealth. Um, the the investment into the COVID, into even diseases, have, um, to uh, what's it called, communicable diseases, or you know, uh, or epidemic pandemic has actually gone down. The biosafety lab that we, the only one biosafety lab we have in Lagos, yes, it's in Yaba, but again, how um, effective is, is it being used? How much of training have we really scaled up? How much of those people are still remaining in the workforce of the, of the government? Um, and that's where we are. We'll take a short break and return with business updates to so stay with us. Welcome back. It's time for business news and stock market review with Fola Shade Ogurinde. Fola Shade, what's the latest? Well, many thanks, Mary. Welcome to business news. In business, the chief executive officer of the Seplat Energy PLC, Roger Brown, has stepped down from office following the interim order of the federal high courts in Lagos. The court restrained Brown from further parading himself as a firm CEO pending the determination of a suit filed against him and others by aggrieved stakeholders of the company. The aggrieved stakeholders accused Brown of racism, favoritism for expert trade workers, discrimination against Nigerians and breach of good governance code. While still in business, the African Development Bank has issued a $2 billion five-year global benchmark bond due match 14 2028. 20, the Continental Bank revealed this in a statement on Thursday describing the bond as its first of the year. AFDB said that the bond is part of its funding strategy of issuing large liquid benchmark transactions. The AFDB seeks to support sustainable economic development and social progress in its regional member countries, thus contributing to poverty reduction on the African continent. We'll take a break now and be back with a review of the stock market to stay with us.
The last day of trading saw the bears dominating the market as all share index closed in the reds at 0.05% with market cap at 30.4 trillion naira. Now in the aggregate, 108 NGX listed equities participated in trading, ending with 9 gainers and 18 losers. Now speaking of losers, Connor came out last with an end of day price depreciation of 9.95% at 38 naira per share followed by Kevin Offshore Support Group. Now the winning side, we see NCR Nigeria Leather Gainers with 9.89% share price appreciation, closing at 2 Naira 89 cover per share, followed by Nigerian Exchange Group. Now at the end of the last weekday of trading on the NGX, we see that a total of 200 and 76 million volume of shares valued at 8.5 billion Naira, exchange hands in 3,400 and 67 deals now compared with the previous NGX trading day. Today's data shows 11% decline in volume, 178% improvement in turnover, but 4% decline in deals. And let's see how some of our select global stocks performed. On the global scene, it's certainly a bearish day for select global stocks, FTSE, Dow Jones and Nikkei. I mean, you can see this table all in the reds. An overnight sell-off of U.S. banking stocks prompted by troubles at the tech-focused lender Silicon Valley Bank has sipped into European markets and sent the FTSE 100 down on Friday. And that's it on Business News and Stock Market Review. Back to you, Mary, for the rest of the news. Many thanks for the update, Felicia Day. Now on the global scene, a shooting at a Jehovah's Witnesses Center in the German city of Hamburg has left eight people dead, including the suspected gunman, as the motive for the attack remains unclear. Several more people were injured in the attack on Thursday evening at the Kingdom Hall building and the port city of Hamburg, where Jehovah's Witnesses members were attending a religious service. Chancellor Olaf Scholz has condemned the brutal act of violence, saying saying his thoughts were with the victims and their loved ones. And in sports, the Flying Eagles of Nigeria have defeated Tunisia 4-0 to finish third at this year's CAF on the 20 Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt. The last time the Flying Eagles finished third at the under-20 AFCON was in 2013. A brace from Jude Sunday and a goal each from Ibrahim Mohamed and Ahmed Abdullahi earned the Flying Eagles their biggest win in the tournament. Meanwhile, the final will be contested between Senegal and Gambia on Saturday, March 11. And that's the size of a news bulletin. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu.